this confirmation hearing to of Honorable Vanny Shalib, Minister Designate, Minister of Internal Affairs, Honorable J. Olai Collins, Deputy Minister Designate for Planning, Research and Development, Minister of Internal Affairs, we want to call the hearings to order. We ask Senator Do Sharif to please bless this hearing with a word of prayers. Thank you. And so, Father God, we come before you this afternoon to say how grateful we are. We are not worthy to call your name, but the several two or three are gathered in the list. As we are about to present uh, the nominees and the senators to you at this afternoon, God, we ask for your voice and your grace on these uh, years. We ask that they go smoothly in the interest of our country. Through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Senator Sherry. Um, we'll do self introductions. My name is Jay Global Brown. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Jay Global Brown, I'm the chair for this committee. My name is Jay Milton TLJ. I'm from Sano County. I'm the co-chair of this committee. All right. Committee members. OK. Senator Cumming B. Wise, member of the committee. Senator Dr. Coleman, a participating senator. <laughs> I like Thank that. you. You know, you're always welcome. Senator <laughs> Professor Edward Wakai Takose from Grand Cape Bank County. Senator Barney Sherman, mm -hmm. Grand Cape Bank County. You want to put <laughs> oh, um, Senator Geraldine Do Sharif, um, representing Monserrado II as member of this committee. I'm Senator Francis S.P. of Riverside County, member of this committee. I'm Senator Dallas A.V. Goy, Riverside County, a resource senator to this committee. <laughs> Uh, Senator Oscar Cooper, Margibi County, uh, non member. Samuel Johnson from Bombay, a member of the Committee on Internal Affairs and Good Governance. I want to place on record that our committee members are present and we do have a quorum to conduct this hearings. Um, Sanjay Arms, yes, can I move forward to place the nominees on an oath? I, I, Fanny Sally, Minister Destiny, Minister of Internal Affairs. Ulai Collins, uh, Deputy Minister for Research, Destiny, Minister, Ministry of Internal Affairs. A bona fide citizen of the Republic of Liberia. A bona fide citizen of the Republic, Republic of, of Liberia. Do you hear about swear? Do you hear about swear? That the testimony I am to give. That is testimony I'm about to give. And to my recollection. And to my recollection. Is it true? Is it true? It's true. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Mr. So Chair? Honorable Chairman? The witnesses on the stand are qualified. Honorable Salif, on behalf of this committee, Committee on Internal Affairs, Good Governance, Reconciliation, we want to congratulate you for your preferment by the President of Liberia. You have been placed on an oath. You know the procedures. You have come here before. We now ask you to address this committee to justify why this committee should recommend your confirmation to the plenary. The county chairman on this committee, Senate Senate Committee on Internal Affairs, Governance, distinguished members of the committee, religious leaders, traditional chiefs and elders, staff of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and local government, 
civil society organizations, members of the public, my family, the press, fellow citizens of the Republic of Liberia. Please allow me, Honorable Chair and members of this committee, to congratulate you and the new leadership of the two chambers of our national legislature, that is the 54th. Let me begin by thanking the Almighty Allah for sparing my life to and to President George Manawia for affording me the opportunity to serve our nation and people. I'm also honored for the invitation that sent me, which affords me the privilege to stand before you today in service of our nation. For this, I am grateful. More so, let me express my gratitude to Your Excellency President George Manning We are once more for the confidence reposed in me as the next Minister of Internal Affairs, if confirmed. I want to assure you, our President, that if confirmed by the Honorable Senate, Liberian Senate, that is, I will serve with diligence, honesty, and patriotism as I've done in the past. Honorable Chairman and distinguished committee members, if confirmed, Honorable Chairman, distinguished member of this committee, if confirmed, I will work the hardest to achieve and foster peace and reconciliation, decentralization, and local governance in consonance with President Weah's pro pro development agenda. Local Government Act. I want to thank the Senate Pro Tem, Senator Albert Chie, who in his acceptance speech signaled out the Local Government Act and the Land Right Bill as the first two instruments to be enacted promptly. No one else could have said it better than our Pro Tem Chair, in whose house the Local Government Bill sits. The Local Government I aim to give effect to the country's national decentralization policy and local governance by providing equal opportunity for all citizens to engage in governance of the state through devolution of certain administrative, fiscal, and political power and, institut and institution from the national government to local governments. The LGA for sure, that is the local government, is, is key to ongoing decentralization drive of the government. If confirmed, honorable member, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of this body, I intend to continue to pursue this major legislation that will help improve our local administration. Sustainability, if confirmed, of the local of the decentralization program. The deconcentration phase of the decentralization program, Mr. Chairman, we, we, are, we have county service centers in all 15 counties established and largely funded by donors. But donor funding is short day. The government has assured that as it out to go, as to do, we assume responsibility of sustaining county service centers. Our focus is to sustain decentralization and better serve our people. These service centers are raising a lot of government revenue, but as you know or may be aware, revenue generated are distributed through national budget appropriation. In the meantime, I appeal to the legislature to consider direct budget support to sustain these county service centers. Peace and reconciliation. The Minister of Internal Affairs will continue to work with relevant institutions and other development partners to pursue peace and peace and national reconciliation already with our oversight, the Peace Building Office, the National Peace Ambassador, the National Council of Chiefs and Elders and Governor Council will continue to work with key stakeholders for stability, reconciliation, and sustained peace in our country. We have also established the National Center for Coordination of Early Warning and Early Mechanism. 
we are conducting country reconciliation dialogue and national and nationwide, sorry, nationwide conflict analysis which identifies key conflict issues. If confirmed, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will work to foster national peace and reconciliation as, in, as national and at national and local levels. The Minister of Internal Affairs will decentralize conflict prevention and management capacity in 155 districts in the coming year or so. And implement, and implement key components of the strategic roadmap for national peace, healing, and reconciliation. Chief Tense Election. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of this committee, if confirmed, Honorable Chair, the last time we saw local elections in Liberia was in 1987, if my, my memory serves me right. My father was elected paramount chief at that time. Now that we have peace, as I propose to work with you and the Office of the President for holding of chieftaincy election. In my view, chieftaincy election will help the government to address the many overlaps in the local governance system. This will help government also cut down wage bill. In fact, some chiefs preside over a non-legitimate jurisdiction. In summary, if confirmed as Minister of Internal Affairs by this August body, I should like to focus on the following areas. One, decentralization, work with our partners and the executive mansion to the office of the president for sustainability of this good program that we have started as a nation. Two, chief dancer election throughout our 15 counties. Three, Communion farming, where we will grow more food in all of the districts of our 15 counties, and that will help our districts and counties to raise funding that will carry on little development work rather than just waiting for Monrovia strong firm. Capacity building for local government and central uh, staff to ensure effectiveness and efficiency of our ministry. Honorable Chair, I have served as Principal Deputy for six years at the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Prior to that, I served as the Presidency as Assistant Minister for Logistics and Administration for six years. If confirmed, I will be coming to this job with this wealth of experience, experience and knowledge to help the development agenda of President Weir. I will use my experience to ensure peace, stability, and national development of our country. Honorable Chair, distinguished members of this August body, I want to thank you for this opportunity afforded me to stand before you to, to talk to you, and I'll stand ready for questions. And thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. We ask that you please stand. Uh, you are on an oath, yeah. and then present yourself sell yourself to this committee. Why should we recommend to plenary to confirm you? I have a Master of Arts degree and also hold a certificate in project management. I've worked for several years in leadership capacities, both in the private sector, and to some extent in government. Uh, I worked at the Ministry of Sports as special assistant to the minister proper, where my work included writing reports, doing research, conducting surveys, writing project proposals, and engaging partners for funding for those projects. Proud to my work at the Ministry of Youth and Sports, I worked at the Ministry of Internal Affairs under the decentralization program as a monitoring and evaluation specialist. Again, my work included preparing work plans, preparing the M&E agenda, preparing result-based reports, 
pertaining to different aspects of the program and working with both partners and government servants to implement the decentralization program. I believe that my training and the wealth of experience that I uh, bring to this day qualifies me uh, Honorable Senate, if confirmed, to perform the duties of the Deputy Minister for Research and Development Planning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. We entertain those, those kind of participation. You see our Sergeant Arm going around. Please write it down and give it to him, and then we'll be glad to read on your behalf. So, colleagues, We've listened to the nominees. It's time for our interaction. Let me let me just kick the ball rolling while you are preparing yourself. Yeah, really. So it's, I'm not going to go that, that level. Yeah. Let me let me ahead, let me go to the minister. Minister designate. In your well prepared statement. I heard you. You spoke at length about the decentralization, the local government act. My concern is that for me, I have participated throughout the process. My concern is in all of the hearings, all of the uh, places we went with the <laughs> governance commission. I did not see much participation from the Ministry of Internal Affairs that's supposed to be implementing the, this program. So I was wondering what was happening. Was it something that was being driven by the uh, GC? I want to know why was this similar lack of interest from the Ministry of Internal Affairs? I won't refer to that as lack of interest, but because the act preparation from the preparation stage to presentation to the president then of the Republic of Liberia to the national legislature, we participated all along the way. But GC was a lead agent, agency that was driving the drafting of the local government act. But this is an act that we all both work with GC, we all review this act together. Maybe it was probably an isolated uh, instance where maybe that day you may not have seen any senior member of the ministry. No, we, we, we have representative in the, you're talking about the hearing across the country? We have representative. We, we have representative, but this is how it was. The, the minister of internal affairs, once the minister is out, I have to stay post because all the administrative issues to address them. So that probably you wouldn't have seen me there. But the minister, if he was not there, the deputy for, for, for research and development planning probably was there. Let me congratulate you, um, Mr. Nominee, for your preferment. The Ministry of Eternal Affairs is not a strange terrain for you. I would like to know why is it that for almost, you've been there like for six years, and for almost 12 years of the um, United Party-led government, we haven't seen um, the municipal elections and the uh, local government elections? And why is it up to present <clears throat> the chiefs, the chiefs, have not been, most of them have not been paid for a number of years. I remember I did some communication as it relate to a lot of the chiefs that were not on payroll. What have the Ministry of Internal Affairs been doing to ensure that those chiefs get on payroll and to ensure that <coughs> the uh, local government elections is held? I heard you speak about it in your, your presentation. But I, I, I don't think the presentation is enough to satisfy the fact that you've been Internal Affairs Minister, uh, Assistant Minister, Deputy Minister for a, lot, for a very long time, and none of these things have come to be. That's uh, number one. Number two, 
I am concerned because when you talk about internal affairs, internal affairs is what drives the nation as a country. It's what this is where you have a decentralization of government policies impacting the other counties, the rural counties, and all of those places. So I want to know what mechanism, what new mechanism you're going to put in place that this pro poor government that we are talking about, the Minister of Internal Affairs is going to be decentralized for our people to feel the impact and the effect of this government. Focuses on decentralization. Um, the mechanism that we put in place will just be a mechanism that, or mechanisms that we we take from the local government act that we are trying to we will work with you all to see how we can fine tune it and it becomes legitimate or a law. Because in that local government act, continue therein, you have all the different steps that we have to keep to make the decentralization program work. So it's not going to be a new thing that I will, I will, I will invent or develop on my own. But the local government act, act certainly has all of the different steps that will help to decentralize our country. Mine will be now, as I'm the chief administrator there, to make sure we implement those steps or milestones contained there in the local government act. Um, the second question has to do with the chiefs not being on payroll. You have two instances or in two different cases where chiefs not being placed on payroll. Uh, as, as, as I speak to you now, I have a document here for Senator Tierney because he raised a concern with me the other day about some of the chiefs in, in some of the local jurisdictions in Sino. And the reason for those people, or one of them, the mayor of Mas uh, Mexico. Uh, Mexico City, is that we have a problem. And I, I, I told some of your colleagues and Senator Tierney as well, because you are once a superintendent, we work in collaboration with the civil service agency. Civil service agency controls payroll. As in the past, the ministries and agencies were controlling their own payroll, so they have control on the payroll. But CSA, whenever they go up, say for example, to do biometric or payroll verification, most of the time our people are put off payroll. And then it comes to us to see why they are not taking pay. I'm sure your, I have dozens of letters written to CSA on this issue. To put them back on payroll, Senator, it is a nightmare for me. So I probably will need your assistance, maybe after everything, call the CSA, call the Minister of Internal Affairs, where the problem lies. Because it only ends at our doorstep, but we are not the ones that are putting these people on payroll. Why put them on payroll when they are working? They own our personnel listing. So this problem, Exist, I've been here, I've existed for, 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 for since I've been on the Minister of Internal Affairs. And then thirdly, you spoke about the elections of chief, local government elections. Local government election has not been held because most often we talk about lack of funding and all. So I'm saying this time around, let me appeal to you all, let's work together to see how we can have local, because that way we will now know who is a legitimate chief or not. As we speak, some people preside over jurisdiction that does not require like a chiefdom. But they say they are paramount chief, and you can't just get rid of them. There are people who will nominate them. But it will, it will, it will, it will clearly define borders that establishes the means and bounds of some of these uh, local jurisdictions that establishes chiefdoms, clan, and general town level. Then we'll have now a new set of chiefs that we can deal with. So that's, with your indulgence, that's how I want to proceed. A case to the uh, general services agency to complain that your people have been taking off payroll. It's been like six years. And they're not paying attention to you. What may you think now that this time around, the general service will pay attention to you for your people to get back on payroll? So why you did that make the appropriate um, uh, recommendation to the library senate or to the committee on internal affairs so that they will have been knowledgeable of exactly what you're saying? Because for somebody to just be clan chief, paramount chief, and for more than 10 years, and they don't take pay, how you expect for Papa to come home? So I want to know what if GSA is the problem, then we should have something now on our decks that says GSA is the problem. I mean, G 
CSA is a problem so that we can be able to deal with it. So I'm just saying now that you should be able to take all those files that like this according to you and bring it to us so we can call CSA to find out for them why it's that these people have been taking off on payroll each time. Grace the Bless, that the former chair of the committee is here, Senator Groupie. We have several interactions on such matters as like that. So the Minister of, of Internal Affairs, even the bond budget hearing, it was also stated here. But you also have some jurisdiction where there, it was, it's a new creation and appropriation is not being made to pay the staff in this new uh, creation. Then also we are stuck because they are being passed into act and there's no appropriation in the national budget. So we also have situations like those. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Minister, just in it. Uh, I joined the Ministry of Local Government in 1961. Uh, where I served as janitor in the office of the superintendent, territory interpreter, or real or territory of Grand Basel. And then I went up to Senate at a superintendent level. Now, my question is during those periods, when we see chiefs or paramount chief elections, we used to be happy, it used to be decent, and it used to give them that Z to know how to use their country gun. Now, what is your plan as, as a traditional son of this land to revamp or to encourage our, our traditional people to know how to use a gun and to, to, to involve in the, the electoral process of paramount chief? I'm a paramount chief, so I... I, I, I am working very well with, with these local chiefs, but you know, since the war, after the war, that is, uh, the kind of dignity chiefs used to carry has been reduced. And I think I want to attribute some of those to us, the lack of having elections. Chiefs are working to us and appealing to us to, to pension them. Because they've been there forever. We are not having elections, and so I am appealing to this body. If confirmed, I want us to work together in the Internal Affairs Committee. Let's look for resources. I think it will even save us some money. It is an investment I think we should, we should, we should honor right to have children's election, and that way you will have new emerging, emergence of new chiefs that will command respect for the from the chiefdoms, as in the case of a paramount chief, from the clan, in the case of a clan chief, and the general town, as in the case of general, general town chief, rather, as in the case of. And that way now, they become, they work with the chiefs and elders of, of, of the council of chiefs and elders and the ministry of local government. You see them, you know, this is a paramount chief of Grand Basel or of Riverside, as the point in case might be. So I, I'm, I stand ready for that. And I told them the other day in a meeting that. You know, when the country is opening up, you have developments coming. Development comes with pain, all right? You will see uh, industrialization that we're all creating for is coming. Then you will see other things going down. So we should not allow our tradition to ever descend. We should hold it strong, even at this, I mean, central uh, 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 industrialization is pushing up because this is what our eyes open on. And this is what, this is the strength of our country. Good chiefs. So I, 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 I'm, one, I'm a brother of a chief, so you can rest assured on that. A, que a concern to you, and then a question to the deputy. My concern here is you are a minister that has the confidence of the president, if you will be confirmed. As legislators, we have our own mandate from the people that elected us. Notwithstanding our constitution says that we should coordinate. You in the era of implementation, we in the era of policy making have to work together. That when we have our concern, you the implementer are the one who we depend on to solve those problems because we are not in the executive branch of government. If you are confirmed by this Liberian Senate, 
This is one major issue that has the propensity to cause a lot of you people that served in previous administration to be denied. Because the relationship with the legislature had not been cordial when it came to this level of coordination. We have not seen it. And this is my concern. That I said it in the confirmation of the Labor Minister, we already got a change. But our hope now is on you now. So you get our hope now. And if you dash our hope, then it means that we're going to have the disintegration of our social fabrics when it comes to governance in the counties. And I just want you to take note of that. Thank you. Mr. Deputy Minister, my question is, I look at your CV and the work of the Liberian Senate when it comes to confirmation has to do with two basic issues. Your credentials, which speaks to your discipline, and your suitability. Now, looking at your credentials here, you are more or less a pastor. Then you go into a ministry of internal affairs. You think you are well placed? Also, a project management specialist. And um, for a considerable period of time, I've worked with several projects, including the decentralization program at the Ministry of Internal Affairs. When the LDSP was set up, in the absence of the chief technical advisor and the program officer, the office was managed by me as the monitoring and evaluation specialist. We prepared the work plan with the team from the Deputy Minister's office. We prepared the monitoring and evaluation plan. We also worked with the procurement specialist to prepare the procurement plan. And uh, we also prepared several reports on what the ministry was doing and on what the program was also doing. So uh, this is work that I'm familiar with that I've also performed at. So what I have in my hand, if the minister proper is not present, obviously you're going to be acting as, I mean, more or less, we have the proclivity to be deputizing for the minister at a certain point in time, though I know you are for planning. Yeah, yeah. So in your capacity, as a pastor for me, as, I mean, my question is whether you feel, I mean, you are not compromised with this nomination. Because if at any time you are working with internal affairs, all we assume is internal affairs are internal affairs. So if my country devil come from the U.S. candidate, you will come there and speak to him? Honorable <laughs> Senator, one of my desires in life, in fact, my greatest desires in life has been to serve God, to serve my country, and to serve people without separating one from the others. This opportunity for me uh, uh, is very important. And over the years, as a leader, not just within the church setting, but within the community. I've worked with all groups of people and uh, have been successful in building a very good relationship with the different demographics that I've worked with. The Ministry of Internal Affairs, among majority of the ministries in this country is one of the most vital ministry we have. In terms of this great thing, everybody's saying decentralization, decentralization. And the administration of the various counties, the different chiefdoms, the different clans, the local government aspect is very vital. But over the years, Hello. They, we see that 
we have been played down. And it's such a pivotal ministry that delivers a lot to the people of this country. If you start from the local level with the town chiefs, we have town chiefs, and town chiefs play a major role to keep law and order. But up to now, town chiefs are not on payroll. But we expect town chiefs to keep the peace and to react and carry the message down to his or her people. But when it comes to a consideration on payroll, we don't regard them. But when we call in meeting, local meeting, government meeting, when the break of Ebola, the outbreak of Ebola, and we want to disseminate information to protect our people, then we call them as community leaders. Then when you move from the town chiefs, you go to the general town chiefs. We hardly pay them well, but they are on the payroll, they are recognized. And some general town chiefs control over 16, 26 towns. But they don't even have a motorbike to get to one town to the other. But we call upon them to do their functions. But we don't empower them to do the function. When you move from the general town chiefs, you're going now to the clan chiefs. Same problem. We got our clan chiefs, we don't regard them. But we expect them to do work for the people, their constituency, and they don't have the financial empowerment to be able to help the people. Then we go to the uh, Palmer Chiefs. Same thing there. We don't regard them. So I've seen this in government, I've been in government six years now. Then we go to the commissioners. Same thing there. So I'm highlighting all the steps in local government that is beneficial to the running of this country. We get the people tied up, but we don't get any empowerment. So the local government fabric breaks down when we have a break, outbreak of disease, when we have disaster, when we have oversights that for education, health, road infrastructure. Mr. Minister Designate, with all these lapses and all these overlooking of various people who play a pivotal role in the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And then to compound it is the centralization, and then we hear decentralization, decentralization, and the Good Governance Commission decentralization. But really, it looks like the central authority do not want to do not want to release the power and authority to the local government authority, whereby bringing in lack of administration ability, lack of development. So when you become, if you become minister, what role you will really put in? that this decentralization thing happens, and that we respect the other local government officials, and the disparity in income and pay is uplifted, and the empowerment for them to have budgetary appropriation for them, you know, for, to fight for them, not just for your central administration, but also when it comes to you, for you to get them working, because it's not working. So that's, that's, that's one question. And, and then the second question, when it comes to the culture, the traditional culture of this country, it has been falling down post-war, as you say. Uh, yeah, you can say, sir. The, the culture of this country has been falling down and down and down, as some of my colleagues talked about the chiefs and the respect and the honor given to Palma chiefs compared to Palma chiefs in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 70s, is not there anymore, and clan chiefs, and so on. 
what will your administration do to uplift these things and make sure these people get what is duly theirs and not to be overlooked by central authority? Because the culture of this country is really going down. The tradition going down. So it's good for you to come here today. You've been uh, at uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs for a long time. To be minister, what will you bring to the table that will be new, that will be refreshing, and that will show respect to the people in your ministry that are just Minister, you can respond, but please be to the point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, two questions. Uh, the first is with the um, decentralization we all talking about. I'm a champion of decentralization because I feel that this is the way that development will reach faster to our people. Case in point is a country service center that delivers services to our people now that have been around you for many years. It's working fantastically very well. And we need to keep that going. Because government for the people, the people got to feed the government. Um, when it comes to giving a, a, a dignity, adding a dignity to our chiefs, I told you, uh, Honorable Senator, I will work with you. When I entered the ministry in, in, in 2012, I did payroll verification across the country. And we saved some money. That money was a goal to be given to district commissioner to build their capacity, first of all, and, 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 and logistical-wise to help them. Of course, central government controls the, 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 the finances of the country. It didn't work. It didn't come true. Because if it, I know, if you call a chief, he's going to walk to come. But because of your respect, they come. It's not fair to them. So if you consider me, the first thing to do is we have a lot of boundary harmonization to work to do as well. Chief dumps lap overlapping into another chief dumps and, and, and what have you. Let's get rid of all of these and then we are indulgence as a national legislature as a whole, have a chief dance election, and then we emerge with new set of chiefs, then we will pick up on that. And then and then and then uh, 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 um, there will be no disparities anymore because you have only left. If you need to have only 15 paramount chief, for example, in Magibi, that only 15 dealing with. But as the case right now, you may be dealing with 30 because of the overlaps. So, so that's 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 how I wish to proceed with and with, with your support. I'm sure we we'll get there. And I'm asking, Mr. Chairman, a follow-up. A follow-up. <laughs> how are you not to stop to make superintendent? glorious error was. Because what do I mean by this? From the chairman county, nearly, for anything sometimes superintendent got to stop, come all the way to Monrovia to sign a check to go all the way back to Maryland. How, you see, this is what I say, decentralization for administration. How would you prevent superintendents from being Okay, thank How you. How would you make them more independent to be able to carry off functions without leaving to come all the way to Maria to get okay from the minister or for the minister to sign one check for them to go all the way back by that time, half year and a pass? Thank you. Yeah, uh, this is what we have already started to do to the country service center mechanism. And more to come when the decentralization becomes holistic. So, if, if a superintendent does not have to leave the country to come to Monrovia to sign checks, no. In fact, as it is now, that's not the case really. Uh, four counties were selected to, face for, to, to, to qualify for fiscal decentralization, which is ongoing now. That's Bong, that's Magibi, that's Nima, that's Grambasa. Those were the four counties we started the, 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 the county service center uh, implementation in. So when that takes hold of all of the 15 counties, then you have financial autonomy. All the allotment that 
used to come under the Ministry of Internal Affairs for direction and management will now be transferred or diverted to county. So the superintendents now will be the one to implement them periodically as the modern ministry we will monitor to see whether what we agree on is what being implemented. Thank you, Minister. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Minister, looking at the looking at our country. Like Makodi said, the Ministry of Internal Affairs is a very, very important ministry. And that ministry is supposed to unite our people. That ministry is, is, is actually responsible. Some of the things it's supposed to do is to reconcile the people in terms of peace and the rest of it. It also has some security work alongside the way. More besides that, Liberia is divided into a cautious setting. We have our traditional values. We have some in the southeast, we have some in the northwest, and the rest of it. And knowing the role that the minister or the minister of internal affairs is to play, those are key issues. We've been told, reliably told, and as I say, you honor oath, you are your deputy minister. We are getting reports that uh, the both of you, the minister of destiny and the deputy minister, are not knowledgeable in terms of our cultural value. Neither have any of you affiliated with them, and that is very important for the country. The second one, uh, Mr. Minister, during the just and during the just and election, and you were serving deputy minister, uh, deputy minister of administration, and then later on you took part in some election, you went back, but on your on your watch as Deputy Minister of Administration Power, before going to take, you know, to get involved in the election, reports were that superintendents, some superintendents, commissioners, some local government officials, were other salaries suspended, dismissed, or asked to resign because they did not take side with a particular political institution. And you've been the principal deputy at the time. We want to know what were the advices you provided to your boss or your your boss. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Minister, you serve as Deputy Minister of Administration and honored the uh, honored Dr. Henry Tukba, but I know he's not there again. And in keeping our law, in keeping of the code of conduct, though some of you IQ and some of you decide to push your able state law. In keeping of the code of conduct, you were supposed to resign two years before taking part into the election. And in the middle of the game, you took part in the election. I want to know if you resigned. I want you to furnish copy of that resignation to the committee, indicating that you were in full compliance with the law. While it's true, all try to challenge it, but you, as a law abiding, a decent librarian, try to abide by the law. <clears throat> When you took part in the election, and then uh, the people spoke and you didn't succeed, you were reappointed or recalled at the Minister of Internal Affairs as acting minister. We also want to know whether that recall was done through documentation, whether the president appointed you through communication, or it was just verbally done and you took over. We, we want that clarity. To close, Mr. Minister, there are more questions, but we reserve some, and we channel some of them through the committee uh, doing our meeting, because the, the, the chairman said that we do not have the sufficient time to ask. Mr. Minister, former President Selly called you back to the Minister of Internal Affairs, our IT minister. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, late October, between October and November. From October up to present, up to the time the new president was elected, we are getting reports that some financial transaction took place. Uh, maybe if we will not want to disclose them in the public, but I will, I, I will, I will want to know, maybe through documentation, how it happened, because we've been told, like I said, there are reports we're told who are trying to get the documentary effort, and maybe we we'll submit that to the ministry, I mean to the committee. That during the two or three months you spend at the internal affairs minister, 
while acting. Because there was no more minister. Whatever happened to your boss, we don't know. And during, the, during that period, there were a lot of irregularity when it comes to your financial transaction. Do you care to talk about it? Thank you, Mr. Chair. If there anything, I'll come back. Uh, as to my financial report that you're getting or financial improprieties, if there is any, uh, during my tenure as IT Minister, as the Minister of Internal Affairs, I will not spend a lot of time on that because if, if, if those are public documents at the Minister of Finance. Okay? Uh, with respect to the Code of Conduct, resigning before you run or no, calling me back, I have a letter here from President Seri signed calling me to come back to act as Deputy Minister of Administration, Minister of Internal Affairs. I don't have the letter when I was resigning, but I have also, I can furnish the committee. Uh, with respect to political participation or superintendents, there is no truth into that, that to my, the best of my recollection. No superintendent was ever dismissed because you support a particular political party. Nobody was ever threatened, except there is documentary evidence that I can see. Uh, the, the next one is the culture. If no one respects the culture, I'm one of those who respect the culture. And there is a session at the Ministry of Internal Affairs also dedicated to that. So I've been there for six years. There is not a single incident with respect to respecting our culture or promoting the culture or respecting no traditional people that has ever surfaced in any part of this country that I did. Both, it, both being the Southeast and where we come from, Bomi, my esteemed senator, where you come from as well. So you don't have any fear of that. I mean, I am a son of a paramount chief and I respect the culture. I want to end on that note. Uh, with respect to, oh, okay, I think that, that's it. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, the, the, the question, please. Yeah, we're going to. The question about the, uh, the letter was not prepared to answer. Mr. Chair, I want to know, when you were you said, excuse me, no, 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 Senator. I have a letter here uh -huh. when I, I was called to go back to serve my country through the Minister of Internal Affairs as a Deputy Minister, uh -huh. as I think Deputy Minister is here. Okay, good. Now, when you, when you, when you were going to run, you resign. I want to know whether you did that, whether you resign. I I I wrote the president of the Republic of Liberia, President Selly, and I was granted. There was a letter from her to say yes, accepted before I went to run. I think that culminated into giving me another letter to come back to serve as I think the minister. Thank you. Mr. Minister, we know you being at the helm of that, this institution for some time now. Uh, after six years of your stewardship of this institution, are you pleased with everything you've done at that ministry? And to a follow-up is that what will you do differently if you are approved, if you are confirmed by this committee? Okay. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, for the past six years, I've been at the Minister of Internal Affairs. <coughs> I can admit to you here today in this hearing that that ministry has been grossly underfunded. During the past, grossly underfunded through national government, through appropriation. <laughs> of myself. Yes, I can say um, in terms of uh, my stewardship as deputy minister, restricted to my, my functions as deputy minister of the Minister of Internal Affairs, yes, I can proudly say I may not have achieved up to 100%, but I might be in the 80, 85 percent of what I should have done. But with, with lack of funding, of course, I was a little bit restricted or limited in completing up to 100%. Yes, and I think it will be better now because I know the ministry with your preferred. 
what I will do differently uh, in terms of leading the ministry and moving the ministry, I just outlined some of them probably in my presentation to you, but I can also add on to them. Uh, we need to respect our local chiefs, respect their view. Let's use them. They, they, because they are the fabric of our country. The actual running of the country depends on them. I intend to be with them more and more. And that way, they see themselves as part of the government, and then we can move together. Coming to the central administration, I've been there, as I said, I work with all the different deputies, because I was the principal deputies, and we work very well. I think that should continue. Because when people see themselves into the work, of the ministry, their views are their views matter, then that way they can contribute. So I think we'll be more family and we will we'll run the ministry that way. But I will require your support to budgetary appropriation that will make the ministry to get rid of chiefs that should be on payroll, they're not on payroll because it's a new jurisdiction created by the national legislature and their appropriation is not there. It gives me that headache. So we need to work together to also with CSA, as I mentioned with Sandra Sherry, to see how we can harmonize the working of between CSA and the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Because our payroll is such a huge payroll, you know, and then we depend on CSA to execute our payroll. to the county. And this is something we know it happened. So don't can kind of say that here and say it happened. What will you do to curtail that kind of impropriety? You will take me out of that because the Minister of Internal Affairs is responsible. <laughs> now I'm coming. The Minister of Internal Affairs is responsible under the direction and management. Again, the chairman and the co chair, they are ex -subitaries. The direction of man and management of the Minister of Internal Affairs controls that. I don't, I don't approve checks except if the minister is absent, out of town, or maybe travel. So, so I, I mean, I tell you. And many times I signed brand new paper without asking for that. <laughs> My question is very parecca, and I want a parecca answer. In your presentation, you stated that you have worked at the ministry for six years at a senior level position, deputy minister and acting minister. I want you to name me two things that you did not achieve and three things that you achieve now when you are, when you are confirmed. Maybe that will relax you to go into the one that I didn't achieve. Uh, what we achieved during the elections, when the elections, the, the, the campaign was so intense, there was an issue in Cape Town. That issue will resolve it in Latia. There was a chief, or there is a chief, called Haji. If we are not involved or engaged the citizens and the communities in that area, that chief would have been killed because there were some lies about him helping to kill a future man. So, but I, but I want to I'm explaining. A key to you. Yeah, he is something. Hey, no, no, no. I'm laying the premise to answer your question. Yes. And that, that Latia issue, I went there, and we resolve that issue, and the election was very peaceful there because the people are refused to even vote if we don't resolve that issue in Cape Town. That was done. That was one of the things that I achieved. One, you said two things, right? I was the, the deputy minister of internal affairs that went to the southeast under the instruction of President Sally that River G County were established under President Taylor without any means and bound legitimately established between Grand Jira and River G. I was the one who went there 
through the help of Partner Cardo Center, and today we have a signboard there to say, Welcome River G, and welcome to Rangira County. Those are the two major things I want to talk about. Uh, next is, what I didn't achieve? He said three, right? Oh, why wow, I would like to achieve. Uh, in my presentation, I actually outlined some of these things that I want to achieve. But, Mr. Senator, if we grow more food in this country as under the Green Revolution it was being done, we will give economic emancipation to our citizens and they will have more food in the community to eat. I intend to focus on the communal farming session in collaboration with the Minister of Agriculture so we can focus on that. Every county, every district will have a district farm. Thank you. If we can do that, we have surplus food, and if we have surplus food, we can sell some. Senator, the schools that I attended as elementary school is in Mecca Town, where I was born, in Bomi County. That school was built to self-help initiative. My father was a paramount chief, they made farm, and they sold, they built a school. When they built a school, they decided that the children attending that school, they might get sick. They also build a clinic, and the government provided teachers and nurses. Those are the two infrastructures that we have there today, today. And we can still do it more as, uh, that's why I intend to focus on actually, in addition to the chieftaincy election that I just mentioned of and the decentralization program. I don't want to take a whole lot, and then you can achieve all. I want to focus on the three, and in the next time, maybe when I come here, I may not even face any question. <laughs> Mr. Nominee, I question your suitability for this position for reason that you have served for 11 of the 12-year term of President Salif, Salif's government as a senior official of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. President Salif is not President Weah. President Weah is not President Salif. President Weah was in opposition for those 12 years of President Salif's term. Are you suggesting that President Weah has the same policy and program for local governance? And that is why you should be elevated from the position of Deputy Minister to Minister Proper? Question. Just a uh, little correction there, my senior brother and senator, Shoma. I've served six years as the Minister of Internal Affairs, now 11 years, uh, six years. I've served six years as the Minister of State as Assistant Minister, completely different from the local governance system. Um, President Wea is certainly now President Sely. That's why we had general elections. Very, uh, uh, um, President, we are here is wisdom. I cannot question that. He is wisdom has decided that I'm best suited in his view to serve the Minister of Internal Affairs as the minister. However, the question is, is, is that the reason why he's promoting me as from deputy to, to I, I really can't answer because I don't know. He, he wrote me to say you are appointed to this, I mean nominated to the Senate to serve as Minister of Minister of Internal Affairs. So I can So you don't know why President Sel uh, we are has nominated you to us and yet you want us to confirm you. But let me continue. It is my understanding that as Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs, you honor my every minister who served in that period and you serve the powers and authority of the minister proper with the acquiescence of the presidency. It is also my understanding that you generally disrespected and stifled local government officials, such as superintendent and commissions, with the acquiescence. Sir, sir, please, let me ask the question. This goes to the suitability of the witness. All right, go ahead. Please. Now, I want to know why you disturb me. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. So, I see one more vote. 
Does he want my vote? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. You want your vote? If the candidate wants my vote, he needs to clear my mind. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Let me start again. You told me that you don't know why President uh, we are nominated you to us, and yet you want our confirmation. It is my understanding that as Deputy Minister for Internal Affairs, you undermine every minister who served during that period, and you serve the power and authority of the minister proper with the acquiescence of the presidency. It is also my understanding that you disrespect the staffful local government officials such as superintendents and commissioners with the acquiescence of the presidency and thereby became, quote, the king of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Assuming these allegations to be true, what new management style do you intend to practice to restore dignity to local government officials and thereby capacitate them to perform effectively and respond to the aspirations of their people? What wrong with the question, sir? Thank you, sir. What wrong with the question? That's a smile. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Senator Sherman. The management style that I have, that I have all the time have, is coordination with my colleagues. I am the one when Maury Dukule left the ministry. When I was 18, I brought our senior staff meeting, where we meet department with we analyze what our, or say what they have done and what we wish to do to achieve together. The records are there. And today, I can bring my phone to you to show you message of felicitation and congratulations for Dr. Henry Tokba, who is president in the U.S. His wife got sick and he had to go attend, I mean, assist the woman attending to medical you know, thing that going on there. I have it here. It is sent in WhatsApp so you can read. If I honor, ever honor my him, I'm sure you will not be congratulating me today. That I'm the best suited. I can bring the phone now. You read that. Huh? I want to see it. So I, I want to say to you, hello, I want to say to you, Mr. Senator, that I've never honored my any minister there because I was the king of the president. I never. The code of conduct. You said you comply with its terms by resigning your appointment before contesting for elective office. And after you lost, according to you, President Salif recalled you to serve as acting deputy minister, and you have served in that position for months without the consent and confirmation of the Liberian Senate. I suggest that you disrespected and disregarded the Liberian Senate by assuming that office of Deputy Minister for Administration for months with all our consent. And now you are here requesting us to confirm you to this minister proper position. Do you care to comment? with the will and pleasure of the President of the Republic of Liberia. The President then was President Sali, who asked me through a letter, as I say I have copy, to go back to the Ministry 
to finish the pending programs or activities that I had before going to run as to, or to, to go in, in, in Bomi County to go in the house. <coughs> and that precipitated me going back to the ministry. And it was, I believe, it was a prerogative of President Sadi to inform the Liberian Senate that this action would have been taken. I didn't, uh, she wrote me. And I'm sure there was a conversation with the Liberian Senate. I, I believe so. Yes. <laughs> My question, I will take you back to Lofa, where I come from. I, and I'm taking cue now from questions that have been posted to you by Senator Chairman and one or two other senators. I want to ask the question as it relates to your team spirit, your ability to work with other people, your ability to consult. In about a month ago, all males killed down in Lofa. Huh? And then, like I said, I'll take you to Lofa. Uh, they, they provided some equipment and some of those things they had for the people of Lofa. I'm informed reliably that the, the superintendent of Riverside County, where the Senator Gua come from, at the West Senator Gua come from, the superintendent of Riverside County, had intimated his willingness to resign. And he went further and said, I don't look, now we know where I resign. But uh, I don't think I want to remain here if the new government comes. And then there was a vehicle, several instruments and equipment and logistics. But there was a particular vehicle that should have been used in Lofa. I'm, I'm informed that you, without talking to the caucus member, instructed the superintendent there to take that, that vehicle and send it to Riverside County to a superintendent that has said you're going to resign. Well, no consultation to us as caucus member. Then my question to you, Mr. Uh, nominee Destiny. How does this speak to your ability to work as a team player, to be a team player, your ability to coordinate, your ability to consult with others? When on that issue, you could not hardly talk to any of our friends the caucus, taking instructions, giving instructions directly to the superintendent, we all refer to the caucus. My question. Uh, <laughs> the The issue of the vehicles and whatever equipment that were left in Lofa by Omeo were pre disobedient by Omeo before they were turned over. They had left off. GSA has come. One of the vehicles in Lofa should have gone to Lofa, to, 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 to Bapolu County, a, a, a SUV, one to Riverses. How did it happen? We are going to Riverside Session to dedicate the county service center. And the superintendent in a remark, uh, you are making remarks for uh, doing a dedicatory ceremony. He cries because he didn't even have a bicycle to ride. So the DSRISG, who is Yakub El Hilbo, decided that the jeeps, instead of uh, 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 two remaining now, in that is the superintendent and the, 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 the superintendent and of, of Lofa and Bapolu, one of them should have remained in Lofa, but should be deployed in, in uh, Riverses to help this superintendent. They, they are all on, there's a communication, I can serve this committee. I didn't disobey anything. They were pre disobedient at the hospital, the immigration, the police, and yeah. fire service, the, the judge, and the hospital. I think ambulance was given to the hospital. I didn't even see anything. It was not me. It was pre disobedient and we had to follow what they said as to the institution to receive. So I wouldn't tell the superintendent, I don't want noise from here. Give it to the people. But I also learned that upon your instruction as senator of the county, you instructed the superintendent to give one of the vehicles to the development superintendent that was not allocated for. So that also left a gap in the distribution uh, module that was used. I don't know how real life on that is, but that was my after. I got a follow-up to, to, uh, to my question, and that follow also buttressed the fact that uh, the issue of coordination. If there was a discussion, a prior discussion, for a vehicle to be sent to Riverside, as the acting minister then, without privileged information, you had a fiduciary duty to at least give, you had, you had a fiduciary duty to have told us that you had a privileged information, that which you didn't tell us. Number uh, uh, in furtherance, 
Your exception to the effect that uh, I instructed your car to be given to the development children is untrue. Yeah, that was I said it again. It's untrue. It's untrue. So then, that alone, with a fiduciary duty that you had to us, having that privileged information, don't you think that would have fed into us in a way, man, that would help us to join you in that kind of decision? Like, oh, senators or, 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 uh, or caucus member, you just don't know. But they think have been prior arranged. We had arranged that uh, it go to Riverside. Hence, for you see it happening this way. This is the reason why it's happening this way. Did you give out that information? Yes or no? Oh, yeah, the minister tell me I never contacted him. Thank you so much. But if I didn't want you to answer, I'm going to ask you the question. Uncle Peter, we only received the copy. I was also on the air in Lofa to tell the people, the citizens there, that it was not the superintendent that was yet distributing. They were all pre pre arranged. That's what I'm going to say. You want to come up with your best answers, huh? And then, and then I saw you, though you went by subsequent and did your time, that was good. But uh, I saw you making reference to, you emphasized that from the Southeast. Is there, no re is there any reason why you emphasize from the Southeast? Is there no special reason why you had to emphasize that? Was that capturing? Was that the whole mark that you want all to say, hey, what a minute? He has a quality, he has a specialty. Why that emphasis? Honorable Senator, uh, that's how I normally introduce myself. I'm a proud Liberian and a proud Marylander. Thank you very much. Mr. Minister designate, I have a sensitive gender question. I have a sensitive gender question to ask. Because you are the protector, if you are confirmed, you will be the protector of the culture. And you stated here that you are culturally oriented. So the question I want to ask is, what is your stain um, as a minister um, to, when you are confirmed on the issue of um, genital mutilation? Then for the, for the deputy minister designate, I saw a CV, you and I have the same orientation. But then here, you said that you have masters of art. And, and in your certificate, it says master of divinity. Then um, for, the, for your bachelor, you say you have bachelor of arts, BA. And here it says Bachelor of Theology. How can you reconcile when the two when the two classifications are not the same? Because Masters in Divinity, Masters of Divinity mean M period D R V. Then um, Bachelor in Theology being B period T H period. But you say B A and Art is not. Um, so I did not see it as Bachelor of Art in Theology or Masters of Arts in Divinity, but I say Masters of Art. How can you differentiate these two? Because these are two different things. In Divinity, Masters of Arts in Theology, uh, and so forth. I think uh, it was an error there that we did not say Master of Arts in Divinity. We stopped at Master of Arts. But we usually say we have Bachelors of Arts in Theology or Bachelor of Arts. Sometimes as pastors, you are afraid to call the PTA, they will say that only pastor thing you know. And you don't know pastor thing alone. You know a lot of things here, I saw it. But it's, it's, it's deception. So it's, it's like on a hook. Yeah, Thank you take deception. The culture of our country is a, is, a fab, is a fabric of our country, which I respect. I think there will be a lot of discussion on this issue of genital mutilation. Uh, in the past, the former president said that uh, what we could do is to make it uh, better. Better in the sense where when kids are in school. Mutilation by consent. Yes. When the kids are in school, let's make sure, let's keep them in school. And it should be with consent. Because some of the kids do not have the minds to, to decide for themselves. For parents, you know, 
uh, turned out to. So if, if you don't manage that very well, you're going to have the country divided on issue as such. So I think uh, with, 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 with consultation, uh, or that, that that will go around in, in that particular on that, around that particular subject, we will see how we can handle because our people it makes them happy. That is what they believe, and you can't yet take it away. Well, I will stand what my culture people want, and I will also stand what will also be harmful to other people. So that's why I'm saying we have to weigh the two and then see. Take a middle course that will be supported to both groups. And I want to say here that you, you do have uh, industry knowledge. You have been in the Ministry of Internet Affairs for a protracted period of time. And if there was anyone who really have the ability to handle that ministry, you would be one of those. So having said that, let me, you know, come back to the issue. I believe two of our colleagues, you know, mentioned this particular question. But I want to extend further the questions that have to do with your participation mm -hmm. in the yes and the election. I believe your answer to say yes, you did, you know, uh, take part in the election and you ran unsuccessfully for the representative seats. My question to you then, did you resign? And if so, on what date that you resign to run for the public office? Also, after you ran unsuccessfully, according to you, you were reappointed to your position by Madam President. If that is the case, when were you reappointed to your you know, previous position? And if you have such letter available, two letters. Okay, thank you, Mr. Senator. The, my brother from, from, from Nimba. Um, the first question that has to do with whether, how did I get back to the ministry? This letter was written on October 13th. I have the, yeah, I may not remember that, but I have this here. I can sub, I can, I can give a copy of that letter to the, to the, to the committee. But I want to, what I have here. I have here this letter written October 13, 2017. Honorable Vani Seri, care of the Minister of Internal Affairs, Honorable Labrio. Oh, okay. Oh, ah, okay. All right. So this is a letter reappointing me. Yes. A time for the cover of the Labrio government, the then minister should have been dismissed because I will be engaging him in impropriety because I resign. At the moment I resign, the resignation letter, the acceptance of my resignation letter, Kape was said, the Minister of Finance, immediately to take me off the bill. I may not remember all of it. In order for the president to appoint, he or she should first you know, nominate and with the consent of the Liberian Senate, okay, appoint a commission, you know, a government official. Uh, that, that is a summary of that particular provision. Where I'm leading, please, if any of you want to understand, there is nowhere in our constitution that the president could appoint an acting while the Senate is in session. No. And, and as far, excuse me. <coughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. As far as I'm concerned, from last year, the Senate never adjourned. We stay in session up to this present. So I'm just making that explicit for you to understand and then answer to my question. Be at the time that for the period that I resigned, of the period that October, I think 12, when I came back. I didn't. Question, it's a simple one. For everyone that has asked all of the 
the questions that I think I should have asked. The both of you, the minister and his deputy, I heard the minister saying that uh, he is the son of the primary chief, he is the son of the traditional person. Being a son of a zoo doesn't make you a zoo. And you fit in the culture. You come from the religious background. I heard the challenges that you face at the Ministry of Internal Affairs because you've been there for some time. You know the challenges, especially so to speak when it comes to budgetary constraints. But let me take the culture sir. What cultural challenges do you expect, the both of you, <coughs> to face <coughs> in the Ministry of Local Government? used to be referred to now Ministry of Internal Affairs. The government to the people. And thank God the government has gone to the people. And how do you attain? What strategies are you going to use to overcome these cultural challenges? The cultural challenges, as you may be concerned of, have been in uh, the ministry, as I said, for six years. Only one time since I've been at the Ministry of Internal Affairs, in Lofa, uh, I've forgotten the place thing. Yeah, so Maurice mm -hmm. Dugulu was then the minister, and then that was settled. We had an effective system at the ministry to handle cultural affairs. Very effective. Head of our minister, Janga, and then uh, Chief Zanzan will collaborate on this issue. So I don't expect anything that will overgrow or uh, what we can do so it cannot spill over to cost is harmony in our communities. I don't think so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one area of concern, and that was also, that has been mentioned is the practice of female uh, genital mutilation. Uh, as my minister said, it is a challenge. And uh, the response he gave to that is what uh, we will all follow, that we will consult extensively with our people to ensure that we find a reasonable answer that will satisfy those that are concerned about our tradition and those that are concerned about the other aspect of that practice. So uh, for me, that is one of the major concerns that, that uh, we have about uh, tradition. There was another one in my mind, but it kind of slipped out. Uh, if I recall, I will seek the time to express it. If you were. Considering the technical role that the ministry played, um, considering the, from the past, the way our chiefs and elders have had that esteem structure. Those days when you see a chief, when a chief appear, the culture and norms that allow us to elect or select our chiefs were very peculiar. What were your role? being a technician at the time, if you were then deputy minister, in drafting, or what was your own input into the act that separated the activities of the traditional council from under your ministry and made it autonomous? I never play a role, because the minister plays a such role. Uh, so I really don't know what led to the separation. But there are discussions between ourselves and the ministry, I mean, and the traditional council, how can we uh, 
sit together and talk because I myself I see some little conflicts here and there, uh, substitutorially what the ministry is supposed to be doing and that of what the traditional castle is supposed to do. So we, we might come back to this August party, the Senate or the legislature as a whole, to see those compromises that will be made and so we can we can synergize and then move ahead. Related to the, the, within the traditional setting, there are two orders. Where you have the clan chief, the paramount chief, you know, as a structure. And then you're having the, 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 the traditional leaders who could be considered other as the, the, the different traditional leaders of different counties that are made up. Other than came together under the traditional council. So it makes it difficult at one point in time whether the, the council of error of chiefs could be the higher ranking or the traditional leaders. What is it? He said that the, one of the best ways to get rid of uh, some of the uh, disparities, if you like, uh, in the system would be to have a chieftaincy election. And that will create a, 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 a new set of chiefs across the country, in all 15 counties. Then, that way, you can now know who preside over which chiefdom. But I said, it is a uh, chiefdom at what uh, 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 Coming to the Council of Chiefs and Elders, I said uh, behind the scene, some discussions are taking place, which I don't think is premature to put it out here now. Uh, so we can, yes, yeah, so. Honorable <laughs> Sally, thank you very much for being here. No, you don't have to stand up. Honorable Colin, thank you for being here. I think, I think you're the one I got a question for, Mr. Collins. You are. I, no, you can have CV. If you want. I'm looking at your CV. Eh? I know they ask you for suitability as to this office when you when you introduce yourself, right? Yeah. What are you suitable again? Yeah. From the church, speaking all the things that you, you, you from Providence, I'm from Providence, you used to preach to me all the time. I want me to know now why is it that you want to do internal affairs? Internal affairs under the decentralization program for two years. And my responsibility was to monitor 15 county monitors assigned to the different counties to prepare work plan, reports, etc. Yes, sir. Yeah, local government law, the decentralization program. Yes, the counties, sir. Devolution of fiscal affairs is, is the transference of fiscal responsibilities from central to administration at the county level. I think uh, more preparation is needed. I think it's doable with uh, adequate preparation and training. <laughs> Definitely. Thank uh, the President Commanding Chief <coughs> for your performance. I thank the President Commanding Chief, Ambassador Senator President George Brea for your performance. Let me just ask you two questions. What do you think that you didn't do in the past regime for the many years you served that you want to come down to finish? That's why. Number two, as a deputy minister for internal affairs, for administration, right? Before, all of the counties were under your direct supervision, ensuring that things went well. During your tenure as deputy minister for internal affairs, there were lots of uh, ritualistic killings all over the country. Ritualistic killings all over the country. Even Nima was also victimized. And no one was caught. But yet you were deputy minister for administration responsible for the, the counties. And here in Maserati County, uh, where your office is located, there was a mysterious death of two prominent persons in this country. Mr. Allison the late and Harry Greaves. And those deaths were attributed to C, 
Yeah. You've been a deputy minister and been a knowledgeable person, wise as I know. Do you really believe that these two prominent persons, Dabasi, knowing fully well that a lot of faces demands that all current runs down, not upstream, and the divine law of God in nature says that anything that when you do in whatever position you find yourself, when you jump into the river or sea and you drown, when you surface, the current goes down, it doesn't go up. Thank you. So looking at the fact that these two persons, one of them went to the LG Hotel, Rawafi Highway, and the body was found by the mansion on the beach. From your own knowledge, do you really think that it was sea death or there was a fault? The um, issue of ritualistic killing in the counties, whenever such incident occurred, the superintendent is part of the process and then there is investigation because it, that the police has to investigate. When the police investigates, when there is corporate to be punished or to be taken to court, then it passes on to the Minister of Justice for prosecution. So, uh, and as I said, Deputy Minister, you are not hearing the direction and management aspect of the ministry, which is the minister. So, most of the cases will rest at the ministry, I mean, at, on the minister's desk. Um, so, I may not I may not have participated in that. But what is it that I didn't do, I wish to do now, uh, 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 senior senator, we have not had chief density election for many years. With your support, having confirmed me, and with budgetary support, we should have chief density election. That will get rid of all of the overlaps in the government, local government system. Two, in time past, when your countrymen once served as Minister of Agriculture of Brunswick, there were a lot of food production in this country at county level. I think we should go back to that. When we go back to that, we'll be able to sustain ourselves with some food and we can sell, not only waiting for country development fund transfer. People can, people will be able to do little development on their own. And that's, that's, that's what I wish to do. Thank you, sir. For your presentation so far. I'm a little bit confused that you missed an important achievement on the watcher eyes of you and that uh, Topa. All of the countries in the sub-region have management disaster agency or disaster management agencies, Ghana included. And I recall very well as a member of the MIA committee of this Senate, we made three trips to Ghana to give Liberia a disaster management agency, and one of those trades you were there at the Kofi Annan Institute. I'm surprised you left that out because it's an important achievement for the country. Now, let me, let me go further. I want the record, Mr. Chairman, to also show that I worked with you for five years. And during the five years when I got to Sano, we did not have a presidential palace. What we had was a skeleton wall. And on your watch again, we're able to now today we have a presidential palace in Sano. I want to thank you for those good things you did for, for Sano and for the rest of the country. My question to you, Mr. Minister, is... However... <laughs> that said, my question to you is... And we talked about this before, but I want the public to benefit from what we talked about. There are instances where... MIA employees in the Leewa counties are arbitrarily deleted from payroll by the civil service agency, including even presidential appointees. Your practice in the ministry is those individuals so deleted, the superintendent of the county must write, even though you have the database, that they are deleted. But if a superintendent doesn't write to confirm that they are deleted, they stay wallowing without pay while they are working. They stay wallowing, suffering while they are working. Only because a superintendent has not written you, even though you know you can see in your database that they were deleted. I need to find out from you how you're going to correct that problem. My second question is, do you have the authority as ministry, as a ministry, 
to put any presidential employee off the payroll and replace him with one who has been nominated but not confirmed by the Senate. Do you have that power as an agency or government? Those are the two versions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commendations. And uh, let me say to you that the last question, we do not have statutory power to do that. That is, that which, that who, sorry, is appointed by the president and just delete your name from the, from the, from the, from the payroll. We don't have that. Um, with respect to um, someone being dropped from the payroll and the information has gotten to us and we said that the superintendent has not written, the reason for the superintendent rating is for the superintendent to be in charge of the county. That is the first thing. But if the superintendent cannot write and it is visibly clear that this person has been deleted from the payroll to our HR session, of course we we'll take action because that's one person working without getting paid. And the sole purpose of the government for the people is to put smiles on the faces of the Liberians. So I, I don't think maybe except in an isolated case because if the superintendent can arrest, sometimes I take phone and ask, oh, how about X, Y person that uh, we're getting complete? Because some of them read directly to me. And if you read, I have to address, I have to give you recourse. So I don't think that uh, if it ever happens, should continue because we should help them. So many people pay their way from far to come just to run after their pay. And if you can't get any recourse, they go back without any recourse. I don't think that's fair to them. That's how uh, 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 this harmony comes about in the different communities. So uh, with your support today, the way I see cross session, all of you here, I'm sure I will be successful, so we will correct some of the action. Thank you. There has been a long-standing issue of disrespect from local authorities to all legislators and the other way around. What plans do you have to correct this issue? One. The second one says, what plans you have to practicalize communal farming? You, I, I listen to you, you talk about communal, communal farming so much, but somebody wants, how do you practicalize what you said? If confirmed as Minister of Internal Affairs, how do you intend to change the current perception as a Ministry of Old People? How will you make the MIA a more professional place? I want you and the deputy to share these answers. The next one says, Mr. Minister, designate, what is your professional qualification? They said it when you are speaking to justify why the Senate should confirm you. There is no indication of your academic credentials. Just briefly. I don't know it's about the National Cultural Troop. You see, my concern is about the National Cultural Troop. What is your plan about the troop? The last one says, which I think uh, this person maybe should find time to go to the ministry, but I will read because we asked for it. It says, my question is, I want to know the full structure of the local government structure of Liberia. This respect given to legislators by county officials, I think that's the first one. Uh, no county official in your right mind should be disrespectful for a, to a legislator. Uh, if, it's, if, it's, if it happens, then that is wrong. Uh, how can we correct that? This is not yet finalized, but uh, let me just pull it, pull it out here. I, I wanted you to, 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 to leave it, but maybe you can help me. <coughs> when I was a little boy in Bomi, it was then a territory, and that Bomi territory was under Mosserado County. It was the superintendent that my eyes opened on, name was J. Budua Jackson. J. Brother Jassim 
came from Grand Cru County. At the time, President Tolbo used to rotate commissioners and superintendents. Jebura Jason development that I can think I can, I'm not talking about now, but at that time, development of, of the of that territory happened on the watch of Jebura Jackson, somebody from Grand Cru. I think it was Kruko's territory then. So if we can all work together and say we will rotate superintendents, for example. We we'll recruit like we are doing under the fiscal decentralization program. We we'll recruit a fiscal superintendents that will take charge of the fiscal responsibility of the counties. Fifteen superintendents, for example, and maybe few for for, for the call it relieving, if just in case somebody is sick. And Cape Man is crossed into Grand Cru. Grand Cru is crossed into Bomi, and. If when you go into that county, you are not a citizen of that county, I'm sure you will stay away from politics. That, in my view, will help to stimulate development. But that is, it, it probably will require some statutory uh, arrangement through you people so we can effect that. I, I think that will help to, to, to sort of get rid of some of these uh, problems. Um, the fa huh? Sorry, it's a policy issue, yes. That's actually. Okay, policy. Well, you can correct me. Thank you, sir. Uh, policy issue, so we can look at it more and more. But I think that we kind of uh, help with some of these uh, problems. Uh, the next question is the farming. The farming thing. How do I intend to practicalize it? Uh, I don't have no degree in agriculture. That communal farming session of the ministry, my appeal to President Weir is if we can get someone who may have some knowledge in probably in agronomy and what have you, so they could can partner with the Ministry of Agriculture. We're not going to do it alone. The Ministry of Agriculture has a statutory responsibility, but we want to help them, work with them, that is, for more food production. My qualification. I have a BBA in accounting. I didn't talk about it because it's in the, the, the stuff, uh, the, the paper that I sent around. I have BBA in accounting for the University of Liberia. I graduated in 2000, and then I continue at a graduate school in regional science where I earned a master's degree, MSc in regional science. Yeah, MSc, we do a lot of writing. So it was, a, it was a, a graduated. That MSc also from the University of Liberia. So I am a University of Liberia product. I didn't go to Yale. I'm from here. Um, the, 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 the culture troop, the culture troop is not under the Ministry of, Af uh, Ministry of Internal Affairs, it's under the Ministry of Information. So I don't want to talk about that. Um, the full structure of the local governance system is, is huge. It's very huge. If that person has a concern specific, you can come and then we can address it. Thank you. We want to thank you, nominees. And audience, let me thank you thank, uh, to the public. This announcement, after this hearing, after we close the search of witnesses, uh, confirmation continues. Uh, this entire week, next week, we we'll continue with, with confirmation. So we want as much as possible as you can to please join us. Let's do that. And so, nominees, let me say thank you, colleagues. We want to say thank you to all of you, uh, to our public that have come to witness uh, this hearing. We want to say thank you for your patience and for your cooperation.